Hello. Hello. Our students from the first session at the uh, KubeCon CollaborativeCon EU virtual event. Uh, we are here at the community track. And today we'll have a panel uh, with the CNC ambassadors. We'll share the insights on how to build a collaborative community. Uh, so let me start with introducing myself. My name is Herbert I'm a developer educated collaborative community foundation. And my primary role is working with the local and global communities uh, from the collaborative ecosystem. And I'm also helping driving the CNCF to, uh, to drive our ambassadors program. So if you're curious who the CNCF ambassadors are, uh, CNCF ambassadors are the well-known individuals who are, uh, who are successful meetup organizers, who are successful speakers, public speakers, bloggers, and so on. And today we have uh, four of them here at the panel and they will share uh, their insights on how did it build a cloud native local community. So uh, let's start with Alison. Alison, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Alison. Um, I I work for a company called Weaveworks as a customer reliability engineer, and I spend a lot of time as well uh, doing uh, working with the Kubernetes contributor community, specifically uh, contributor experience, and I'm also a CNCF ambassador. Um, yep, awesome. And that's me. Awesome. Uh, Jessica, want to go next? Thank you. Uh, my name is Jessica. I work as a team lead for our uh, engineering enablement team, which is an internal platform team at a small startup in Gothenburg called Anotel. I'm also a CNCF ambassador, mostly because of the work that I do as a meetup organizer for the Kubernetes Get Boy Meetup, which is a local meetup right here. Uh, it's more of a general CNCF. Uh, Meetup, but it's called Kubernetes because that was was the most cool when we started out. That's me. Thank you. Awesome, uh, Casper. Sure, thank you. Hi everyone. So yeah, my name is Casper. I uh, work as a site reliability engineer at a company called Lunar in Denmark, and uh, I run uh, the Meetup group here in uh, in the second largest city of Denmark, and I help sort of co-organize meetups uh, across the Nordic countries in what we call cloud native Nordics. I co-founded that uh, alongside with, with uh, Lucas Kallström. Um and we just try to help each other out as much as possible within the Nordics and, and try to yeah, sp spread the message of Cloud Native. Um, so yeah, thanks. Awesome. Uh, Sam, what do you go next? Yeah, hello everyone and uh, thank you for joining. I am a software engineer working at Walmart Labs and uh, my Twitter handle is either Sayam Patak. I'm a CNCF ambassador. I'm Docker community leader, and I run various meetups, including Rancher, Influx, Kubernetes, CNCF at Bangalore. I'm also an Influx Ace, and yes, we try to help uh, the community in all possible ways, so that's why uh, I run a YouTube channel as well, which is youtube.com slash Sayam911. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, so, Casper, you mentioned that uh, you and Lucas, you've been the co-founders of the uh, Nordix community. So, uh, can you please describe us uh, how have you how have you get get started with building the community? So, what was the reason why you started building a meetup community and a uh, local community at home? Yeah. So, so both Lucas and I started local in in sort of the cities that we are. Sort of based in and and just yeah we, we were both passionate about uh, this new technology and and it was pretty early on i did some some work with kubernetes and at my master thesis as well and i just wanted to work with with kubernetes and cloud native and uh, had the opportunity to do that and actually had the opportunity to to sort of start from scratch and implement a new uh, platform based on kubernetes and at that time i i sort of needed to to find similar people with similar interests and a meetup was a good way to uh, to sort of gather people and, and talk about these uh, yeah these new new things new technologies and then at, at some point uh, lucas and i were sort of discussing back and forth uh, why not try to to help each other as much as possible in the nordics as well and and, and try to create i think we call it a meetup alliance um, 
So just uh, a group of uh, meetup organizers, Jessica included. Uh, I think we are 13 groups at the moment, uh, kind of uh, hard right now with the, the corona uh, pandemic and, and all that. So we've been trying to do some, some online stuff as well. But that's sort of how we got started. It was just passionate uh, about Cloud Native and, and wanted to share our experiences and, and yeah, found each other and then and, and sp spread it to the entire Nordics. Awesome. Uh, Jessica, I know that you're also based in Nordics. You're based in Sweden and Gothenburg, right? So what was your story? Well, so I have always been interested in um, like container-based solutions. And I was pretty much involved in the Docker uh, meetup group uh, when it started in Gothenburg. And a few years back, I started Meltwater, which had a use of running several containers in a distributed microservice architecture. And until this spring, I was on a team that was the team providing that. Uh, and we based a new, we were running Mesos Marathon in the, bot, um, in the beginning, and we were going to upgrade that to a new container orchestration tooling, and we chose Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. And it was really fun to set it up from the start, and we learned so many different things. So it became kind of natural to want to share that because we had to fight a lot to get the knowledge we needed to build that. And we felt like we learned so many valuable things that we wanted to share with everyone else. So me and my team, we were pretty involved in the community and it just felt very natural to be more involved as an organizer as well. Uh, so that's how I started doing it. And then I got in touch with Casper and Lucas and we started building uh, the Cloud Native Nordics and it's been really fun and it's uh, such a great community to be part of. Perfect. Awesome. So let's flip to another side of the world. Alison, how about you? So in terms of organizing meetups and things, um, I will, I'll be honest with everyone here. I don't have heaps of experience with that, but what I do have experience in is bringing together people online asynchronously as a community through like things like our new contributor workshop that we're currently working on building uh, in the Contrabex. So, yeah, that's kind of awesome. my background. Yeah, that's perfect. It's a good, uh, it's a good sample of how do we have people in the ambassadors community who are not only the meetup organizers, but doing also some different work around the globe and around the ecosystem. Uh, so before we move to Sayam, I have uh, one question to Sayam. So uh, approximately half a year ago, my last my last international business trip was to India to speak at the local uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes forums, probably one of the biggest Kubernetes events that have ever happened in India. And I was really surprised and impressed by the number of people who are, uh, who are working in the industry there, who are passionate about the cloud native technologies. So I'm really curious to hear your story and your background about how, how do you handle all that capacity of various people, of multiple people, of probably thousands of people who are um, interested in building and trying the cloud native ecosystem in India. Yeah, uh, so the uh, cloud native ecosystem is growing very rapidly in India and in all the states, I would say. Uh, but I'll talk only specifically about Bangalore, uh, where it all, where my journey started. Uh, so it started back uh, I, approximately two years back. Uh, when I was uh, attending Docker meetups and uh, the things were picking pace. And yes, the Docker meetups were really powerful. I mean, they were uh, full packed and we used to, uh, you know, uh, have full registrations, full house. So with that, I started attending. Then slowly, slowly, I uh, submitted a CFP and I was uh, one of the speakers over there. And I started then contributing uh, back to back, back to back speaking sessions. And uh, slowly I realized, yes, the community uh, making is also, I mean, very good. So uh, I started all the new tech meetups, uh, the Rancher, Influx, CNCS, so all these meetups were started. And then we had a lot of audience who actually uh, were willing to attend uh, and learn these techs. So uh, with that, I, I did, uh, I mean, I started organizing the meetups, uh, reaching out to uh, specific organizations and uh, finding other speakers, all that stuff. I mean, it really excites me. And uh, I mean, I, I would uh, continue doing that and building more uh, great community of it. Awesome. 
Uh, and another question to you, Sam. So, how do you find the meetup for uh, for your meetups for your meetups for your local events and so on? Uh, so uh, finding uh, the meetup is uh, like we usually find all the meetups uh, via the meetup.com and uh, all the social media platform is very important, uh, plays very important role over here. Uh, so you keep an eye on Twitter. So we usually how we do is uh, like we post any of the meetup, we uh, immediately post out uh, on Twitter. So. It should have a couple of weeks. I would believe not. Uh, it should be not like you are planning on Monday that you will be giving a meetup on Saturday. So it should not be like that. So you should give ample enough, ample of time uh, for organizing a meetup. So you have a, uh, you have a title. You have certain set of uh, process that is happening in the background, and uh, you have certain set of marketing that is getting done so that people can know like this is happening and here it is happening and this is what they will be gaining the insights of uh, from the cloud native tech. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, last year, I had some amazing experience with visiting multiple Nordic cities, specifically Aarhus, where Casper is based and Gothenburg, uh, where uh, GCK is based. And I had a really amazing experience of speaking at a local meetup in Gothenburg. And I was really impressed with the variety of topics that have been covered there. So, uh, Jessica, want, do you want to provide for us an answer? How do you? Uh, how do you select the content for your meetups? Uh, where do you find the speakers and so on? I wish I could say that I had like a large pool of talks that I could just pick from, whichever I think has the best content and stuff. But honestly, I feel like that's one of the hardest problems to solve when organizing a meetup is to find someone willing to provide content. And it's not that there's not enough people with content to share. It's just that a lot of people haven't done public speaking before. They are very scared of it. They think they, they also think that what they have is not worth sharing. Uh, they think that their experience is not that special. Uh, they think that their setup is too small, too new. Uh, there's like multiple different reasons why people don't want to share what they have been doing. And I think that, that what I do a lot is that I talk to a lot of people when I meet them at meetups. And I ask what they work about and they tell me something cool. And I'm like, oh, that sounds very interesting. Tell me more. <laughs> and mm -hmm. after a while, you try to like convince them that this would be a good talk. They don't have to prepare that much. And what is important is just to share their experience, mm -hmm. because that's what I always find the most valuable, to hear specific use cases and people sharing their own specific experience on working on something. Great. How about you, Casper? You also have yeah, the big and amazing I, community I, in Denmark. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, it's so. So in the beginning, it was kind of hard. We we sort of did a lot of. Trying out a lot of different kinds of ways to uh, to to you know run uh, meetups. We've been uh, doing full uh, forty-five minute talks. We've been having sort of an introduction level as well with ten minutes. You don't just choose a CNCF product, uh, present that. We, you, we don't expect you to be an expert or have any slides like that. Just present that and uh, you know, go through the readme and and and. Talk about your takeaways from from that, and that, that's been really successful. Yeah. Uh, um, so we had some audio issues. So if you can uh, if you can briefly repeat the beginning of your answer, Casper, it would be great. Probably okay. the first two sentences. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, we, we can hear it now, and we can hear the, the the biggest part of your answer. But there was some difficulties okay, so. at the beginning. Yeah, so so in the beginning we were doing as uh, was Jessica just uh, told us about that we were talking to people and uh, encouraging them to step up and and be a speaker and and help them as much as possible and have review their slides before and, and just do whatever we sort of could to to make them comfortable in, in presenting their their experiences because that's very important when you yeah have new speakers step into this uh, to be a speaker. And uh, luckily, many of them found out that this was actually kind of cool. And we did some tours with some of them uh, around the Nordics as well. So that's been really, really cool. Awesome. 
Uh, so the similar question is to Alison, but with, with the specifics of your events, Alison, since you're not only running the local meetups, but you're also running the global size events like the new contributor workshop and so on. So how about your preparation and finding the content for them and so on? Okay, so finding content, um, well, my my experience with that um, currently is we we kind of look at what sessions that we've had presented before at the new contributor workshop and finding new topics and ideas for people to present is for for me is um, about finding things that we haven't really covered before so. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of a of an example right now, and there is a really good one, but I just can't remember it off the top of my head. Sorry. <laughs> but, Not a problem. Yeah, it's just yeah, find finding topics that haven't been covered before, and seeing if anyone's interested in covering those topics. Awesome. Uh, my next question is uh, mostly to, to the folks that, uh, that have various and different organizers in their communities. So, Casper, for example, you, you have uh, not only you uh, running the local uh, Denmark meetups, for example, in Oahu. So, how do you divide the, uh, the lot and how do you balance your responsibilities between the organizers in your group and in your local community? Yeah, that's a really good question. And that's also one of the, the things that's been kind of hard. So we are in Aarhus, we are right now four people organizing the, the meetup and and all of us are doing this uh, in our spare time. And it's uh, it can be challenging to to have everybody sort of step in and, and do the work. So it's been it's been ongoing sort of discussions on do, do you really think you have time for this? and, and We've been, but we've been been managing, and we we actually kept a nice cadence. I think in, I think around one meetup uh, a month, uh, sort of in in the past three years, uh, if you count uh, out the <laughs> the last couple of months. <laughs> um, but but yeah, it, it it can be challenging when you have many people involved and they have a lot of stuff going on. Kids and and I have kids as well. It it can be challenging to to do this. Um, but I get a lot of value out of it. I think it's really fun to do. Uh, just go out, talk to people, and and yeah, find new cool ways of uh, uh, seeing this uh, this yeah this uh, paradigm, basically. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Jessica. How about you? I think it's uh, very similar. Uh, it's always hard because uh, people' lives move in different. Uh, Cases. So sometimes it's very hard for people to spend the time on preparing. They might be able to show up and help out during the event, uh, but uh, sometimes in periods there's a high load on certain individuals. And once again, it's like kind of hard to get that synchronization going uh, and plan things with enough time ahead to make it happen, but also not too much to make it to be too far off in the future so that you don't really spend the time planning it until it's too late. Uh, but I think it requires every type of people because some part of the load is the getting the speakers, getting the contents and finding a location. And, and one part of it is to just make the event itself flow very well and connect with people online before and after and stuff like that. So it requires every part of it to be covered. And I think a great team will cover all of it together. Great. Uh, Alison, are you the only person who, who runs the local meetup when you're in your area or you also have a team? Uh, in, in my area, I'm currently not involved that much with any meetups as um, I'm, I'm also moving soon. But there is a, a really good meetup that happens in New Zealand down in Wellington that I have been to before. So. Uh, that's uh, the the cloud native the CNCF meetup that's in Wellington, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's awesome. my answer. <laughs> awesome, uh, Sam. How about you? I know that there are so many people who are driving the meetups in Bangalore. So, do you also have a team, 
or you're running them alone? Uh, yeah, definitely uh, alone, it's not possible. So uh, I, I think meetups uh, on the whole, first of all, it's not a conference. Uh, so it's a community driven event. And in a community driven event, you need uh, the help of the community as well. So here, how we do is we have a certain set of people who come up with the ideas. So we brainstorm them maybe over Slack channels or a, a small or WhatsApp or, or a call even. So after brainstorming, uh, we de decide like, okay, this is the idea. Then uh, they, they, we divide the work, like one of the folks will be, uh, you know, getting the venue and talking to the venue folks over there, how it is going to be the seating capacity, the presentation projector and all that stuff. And on the other hand, other folks will be uh, doing the marketing and, uh, you know, that's how they are getting divided over there. And we also create a small WhatsApp group for all the meetups that we do, uh, where we put in all the speakers and the organizers so that any questions, they are, you know, are readily answered and there are no gaps. So that's how uh, I'm doing currently. Awesome. Uh, we, we also have a good number of, uh, of the questions from the audience, so probably we can focus um, a bit of them, and after that, we can also come back to uh, to the original topic. So, uh, probably this is the question that uh, Alison can answer the best. So, uh, Jonathan asks if there are any any talks besides any talks on the meetups. Are there any other formats you usually host, like hackathons or open spaces, and so on? I know that you are well experienced, Alison, with new contributor workshop and the similar similar items. So. Probably have um, some related experience in the similar areas. Yeah, so with um, there, there's definitely um, a lot of different formats. Yeah, uh, the format that I'm particularly working on is um, working with a group of people in the community to deliver an asynchronous set of um, videos, uh, workshop style content for people in the wider community to enjoy. So uh, other than that, uh, I believe um, there's so some of the other people on the panel too have had experience with doing, rather than just a meetup where someone's on stage and talking, um, workshops in particular. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I can oh. answer that as well. Um, so yeah, for sure. We, okay. Yeah, so we've, we've been doing uh, different kind of tracks, also hackathons and, and workshops. Um, we call them hack nights in, in Aarhus. Um, one time we, we ordered like 12 uh, Fibian Friends plushies and, and just invited all newcomers to communities, come and learn. We, this is a one-on-one. -on -one. We, 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 we actually figured out at some point that uh, a couple of years in that we were probably going too deep and we needed to take a step back and, and sort of invite the, the newcomers to, to, to this as well. And, and that's why we created these hack night was to, to get newcomers in there and learn Kubernetes and get them up to speed on, on this new uh, paradigm. And having plushies with Phoebe and, and all of that was a really popular thing as well. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's been really cool. We did it for Prometheus as well. So I can definitely recommend doing that. It's, uh, it's super awesome. <laughs> Right. Jessica, how can I you? also? Of yeah, <laughs> we have been we have been trying the open space uh, format a few times, or uh, also similar like unconference style. And I would say that what we discovered was that most of the time people feel like that is a little bit too undefined before going there. So they are a little bit uncertain of will this be interesting to me. Uh, but a format that works way better is to have first one specific technical talk and then open up for an open space because most often people want to discuss different things. They have different takes from it and they feel like there's something they want to talk more about with people and share experiences. So some kind of combination of presentation and then followed by an open space has been really good and valuable for the attendees in our experience. Great. Uh, Sam, how about you? Yeah, so uh, yes, hackathons are very popular and hack nights, uh, yes, we, we do them as well. So hack nights bring people together and, you know, brainstorming the ideas. And, and I have seen a lot of support from different organizations who give the cloud credits to the folks who are, who are joining uh, to, you know, build something, build something AI solution or something like that. So that's pretty interesting. 
and uh, on top of that uh, whenever we are doing meet up we we give uh, like last half an hour to uh, you know 40 minutes to anyone to come and uh, speak up about uh, any product that they are using and how it is benefiting the community so this uh, this makes them feel like they are not only here to uh, you know uh, just listen to uh, the regular talks that is there the agenda but also they will be able to participate actively great yeah. Can I just add a, a small comment as well? Um, of course. This is just a sort of a shout out to Lucas. He actually did this uh, this small tool called Workshop CTL. It's not finished or anything like that. It's on our GitHub cloud uh, dash native dot uh, dash Nordics Workshop CTL. It's a tool that can actually help in, in spinning up a, a workshop for, for everyone on DKE or whatever sort of provider. I think DKE right now so, and, and DigitalOcean is supported, but if you're interested in, in a tool like that, that can create a, a workshop uh, cluster for your your local meetups, your each uh, attendee, take a look at that and, and please help help us uh, build that because that would be awesome if we could get some cool thing working there. Great. Uh, and that's a good question from Dominic. So Dominic asks us, uh, about um, so he briefly describes his personal story that he's interested in meetups in general, but nobody in his era uh, even even driving them, even creating them. So Dominic asks if uh, that obviously they don't know all these things about uh, about Kubernetes. How do you think about this yourselves, and how do you uh, handle expectations of the meetup attendees while preparing the meetup? Sam, would you, would you go first? Yeah, I can I can uh, go for that. Uh, so uh, I can uh, answer based on my personal experience over here. Uh, so when I started Influx Meetup, uh, so there were very uh, limited number of people, first of all, who knew about the product. And obviously, uh, when you don't know about anything, why would you want to learn it? Uh, so the thing is, uh, you will end up maybe in having maybe 10 folks or five folks uh, in your first meetup, but that's completely fine. Uh, in the beginning, uh, you should not expect that, okay, over 100 folks will join me and uh, because I'm doing it for the first time and it's, it, it doesn't go like that. So what you have to do is uh, just plan the meetup. Even if you don't have knowledge, uh, what you can do is you can have a 15 to 20 minutes live virtual session in your meetup, uh, which can run uh, on live uh, on a Zoom or whatever stuff that works well for you. And after that, uh, to whatever knowledge that you have, you can share with the community and you all can, you know, sit together on a round table because first one, uh, definitely it's not going to be 100 plus, it will be very limited. So for the first one, you need to uh, be very focused, like, uh, yes, we have to do it and irrespective of how many people will join. Slowly, slowly things will grow and the community grows and you will find uh, people from the community who would be wanting to help you uh, in organizing the future meetups. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Alison, uh, the same question is to you about how do you handle expectations of the attendees of your workshops and uh, similar activities that you're on? So, ha handling expectations um, for uh, attendees um, and people wanting to engage with this content that we are providing to them. Um, it has to be very clear kind of from the onset of what you're planning to deliver. You, you have, the, the more clear you are, the more someone can make the judgment of, should I go outside, catch a bus, go into town um, to go visit this meetup? So yeah, that, that's my, my answer. Um, and the, I'm just reading more into the question, more of the question here. Um, if if there if there are people, if your area doesn't seem like there's a lot of people who would be interested in this in in the meetup, um, re reach out to the online community. I mean, with the coronavirus pandemic, a lot of people are streaming events and talks online. So even if you go on Twitch, you'll find lots of live events to uh, watch and be a part of and participate in. So yeah, that's my answer. 
Awesome. Uh, thank you. Jessica, would you want to cover your experience? I think that uh, we did an interesting experience in the Cloud Native Nordics uh, just uh, when everyone was starting working from home and we could not do meetups, was that we set up sessions that were very specifically named. So we had Cloud Native Nordics Cafe, which was like basically a very casual hangout where you can discuss whatever you had on your mind today. And we had the, uh, the tech talks, which was more of a specific deep dive technical uh, description, maybe a use case, maybe more of a presentation about a topic. And we had also the stories, which was very much about specific use case on around a single topic that we decided beforehand. I think by framing those like that, we created very clear expectations on what to expect from the sessions. And I think it's something I would like to bring back to the meeting person meetups when they come back as well. Uh, do you have anything to add on that, Casper? No, no, I, I'm totally, I totally agree. I think naming naming was a really smart thing to do, and I really loved just the casual cafe hangout. We didn't have any topic or anything like that. It was just, you know, 15 minutes, to 30 minutes, whatever time, sort of whatever the conversation was. Sometimes it, it, it was short, but sometimes it was actually quite quite long. So it was a really cool experience. But one thing we found out was that doing the, this every day was probably not a good idea. So uh, we, we actually canceled it and, and we are st still looking at, at different options and, and figuring out how we can bridge sort of this virtual uh, universe with the physical universe once we sort of can, can get back into the, uh, the physical meetups. And that, that's kind of hard. <laughs> nice. Uh, another question. Um, uh, Another question from Dominic. Uh, so Dominic is asking is asking you if you had any fears when you started building your uh, local meetup communities or your um, your communities at all as in Alison's case. Alison, have you had any fears when you started doing uh, new contributor workshops? So there, there has been through this whole experience. It's, it's been a bit of a roller coaster because uh, we were originally planning for Amsterdam in person, this whole event. And so uh, there, there has been just the consistent fear of just the pandemic coming in and uh, just making a mess of plants. So that, that's been a, a I think that's just a 2020 fear. Um, there's other fears. 2021 fear. <laughs> um, other fears is would have to be, you know, people not like. Well, the, it's easy to get caught up and think, oh, what if people don't commit to this or not deliver or. All that, but in the at the end of the day, it's a it's a sort of it's a trust thing, and um, you know, and people are human and make mistakes. So not really like a clear answer on that because <laughs> I don't know if that's just uh, me being overly trusting and being like, oh, everyone's gonna work together and it's gonna work out great. But um, yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> Awesome. Sam, have you had any fears building the Bangalore community? The community is probably in one of the biggest technical hubs in the world, so it could be challenging for you. Yeah, I mean, uh, there are a lot of fears, and but fears leads to success, I believe. Uh, so the biggest fear always is like, I, I decide to do a meetup at a particular location and uh, they call me up and say, okay, uh, our venue is booked for any other visit, so we can't do the meetup. Uh, so everything is planned, people have registered and they are ready to come and suddenly the, it, it cancels. So it happens and it has happened to us and it might also happen in future. So you have to, I mean, you, it's not a conference. Uh, so it's just a meetup that we are doing for the community. So even if it cancels, it's fine. Now, sometimes it happens like uh, there are five speakers and two of them will on the spot right at the moment will say they have some personal emergency and they won't be able to make it. It's fine. I mean, yes, it's fear like uh, a few of the folks might have come to, uh, to attend just their talks. So they might not be happy. Uh, but that's how it is. I mean, you have to deal with this. You have to just accept, okay, it's it's not uh, that it, it cannot happen. 
so it it can happen to anyone so all those fears are there but uh, when when you take it casually i think it becomes more successful uh, that's that's my take on that perfect we are almost out of time but still have uh, time for jessica and casper answers so if you can if you can share us briefly your fears experience I think for me, the biggest fear is every single time that no one will show uh, that I will have like 50 to 100 people registered and no one will show up. It almost happened once and it was uh, around like 50 people registered and only like 10 people showing up and actually it was one of the best discussions I ever had with the meetup. So it was still like a success for the people that showed. Uh, so that was definitely good anyway. Yeah. Casper, you too. Yeah, and it, same for me. Awesome. Uh, all right, uh, so we are almost out of time. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed the session. I hope our panelists have enjoyed the session. I hope all the attendees have enjoyed the session. And we'll also continue the conversation in the uh, CNCF Slack at the channel uh, slash two uh, dash kubecon dash community. You'll be able to find us there and feel free to ask us um, your questions. You will also be able to find us on Twitter and other social networks, so uh, please check out us there. Uh, thank you for joining us today and goodbye. See you all. Thank you.